Hey, welcome back to Sunbird Garage. Look, suspension. That's what we're doing in this video. So getting the suspension on one of these cars is not the easiest thing to do, especially with, you know, no motor in the car, so there's no weight in the front end. So, you know, it was a, it was a struggle to get this thing on there and I, I was scared a few times here, but we were able to get it together. Um, there's a trick to doing it. A normal spring compressor will not fit up inside that spring and be able to come out of the hole that's in the bottom of the A-arm. Even with these AJE A-arms that I've got on the car, there still wasn't really enough room to get that spring compressor out of the bottom. So what you have to do is just use the lower half of the spring compressor and a piece of three quarter inch threaded rod. And you, you thread the rod up through the uh, shock hole. And you really it's really important to use these, these bigger um, threaded rod couplings. I did the other side with just standard three quarter inch nuts and it started stripping the rod out. So I would, if you're gonna do it this way, I would highly recommend getting those, um, those threaded rod couplers. A uh, lot more surface area there and there was zero issue with those. So once you get that thing together, get the, uh, the uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, lower half of the spring compressor on the spring. You can't put it too close to the bottom because if you put it too close to the bottom, you can't get the darn thing out. It actually pinches between the springs, so you can't get it out. So you have to go about, I think I did the third spring, the third coil to get it uh, into the car and then back out of the, the, the spring. So um, I also had to use a ratchet strap because as you're tightening this, the, the spring in, it actually wants to you know swing one way or the other and they actually swung out away from the car. So I had to get a ratchet strap and pull it back. Um, but once it was up compressed enough, I was able to get the, uh, the knuckles together and the A-arms connected to the ball joints and, uh, and locked in place. So once I took the spring compressor out, the problem was since these AJE uh, A-arms don't have anything to limit their travel downward, the stock A-arm actually rests on top of this spring pocket here. So it'll only go down so low, it'll rest on that spring pocket. These don't have that. So they'll compress all the way down. And when they compress all the way down, it actually will pinch the spindle against the spring pocket and you won't be able to turn it. It'll just be locked in place. You won't be able to turn the, the wheel at all. Um, and again, that's because there's, there's no weight in the car. So I actually left the threaded rod in my car until I get the, the weight in the car. And I made these little angle iron brackets just to put some uh, some tension on that spring so that I can actually turn the wheels, well, uh, other wheels on the ground, kind of. There we go. But I can, I can turn the wheel. Um, and actually, I'll jack it up a little bit. So I can actually turn this wheel, well, maybe not one-handed. So it's not pinched in there anymore. So yeah, it's a, it's a pain. Um, these are, a, this is a power stop brake kit, S10 brake kit. Um, it comes with the rotor, the uh, caliper, and I think that's it, and the pads. It comes with the pads too. Um, I don't have the pads in here. These are still not hooked up to the car because I still have to file a groove into that bracket. The hoses are actually, the notch on the hose is actually over one way or the other, I forget which way. So I gotta file another notch in this bracket for the hose to fit. But again, here's that uh, inline tubes kit. It lines up with that bracket perfectly. So there you go. So I'm a little out of sequence here. I, I did the recap and now I'm gonna kinda walk through the parts and what I did here. So I bought AJE control arms. 
If I was going to do it over again, I would invest in the Justin Kill Overkill uh, A-Arms. They're, I think, a better quality. These were okay, but I think his are better. For the rear, I bought UMI Control Arms. Uh, I actually bought them in red and then decided I'm painting the bottom of the car red, so I switched to black. And then I found my springs. I actually went with uh, Moog 6490s. These are, I think, either four-cylinder or maybe even V6 springs. And everybody said V8 springs would be too too stiff, so the car would sit too high, so I went with the 6490s. Getting the A-arms installed was pretty easy. There was no, no challenges there. Slipped them in, used the original bolts, which were CAD-plated. The lower bolts are the cam bolts that adjust caster and camber. These are rare parts RP15889. I have that memorized for some reason. But they look pretty good installed here. Here's the spring sitting in the lower A-arm pocket. And it needed to be compressed quite a bit to get it in here. I didn't have the spring insulators anymore, so I used a piece of 5 8 inch heater hose to insulate the spring against the car body. Well, hopefully I can get this thing in there without killing myself. But using the lower half of a spring compressor, piece of threaded rod, uh, inch and three quarter long, threaded rod, coupling nut, and another nut on the bottom, just a jam nut, and another one on top, and grease the washers. And I've got enough room in here, I think, that I don't have to take off my my booster. So, yeah, wish me luck. Here's one side installed, and remember I said at the beginning, if you don't have tension on that spring, it pins that spindle against the spring pocket, so here's my little angle iron brackets that I use to put some tension on that spring. Well, look at that. I can turn it, I can spin it, Got the caliper on. I still need to modify this bracket because the hoses that I have have this little notch here. You see a little notch? Little notch here in a different orientation. Because Monzas are sunbirds and H bodies like to be different. So I gotta get a file and cut a little notch in that. And then I should be able to put the uh, the hoses and the calipers and everything in here. But uh, yeah, we're pretty close to getting this thing off the rotisserie. Won't be today, unfortunately. I got other stuff I gotta get done. So, but uh, there's my threaded rod with my angle iron, just to uh, give a little bit of clearance here. But hot damn. Here are the spindles that we used on the car. My buddy Steve got me these and they're off of an S10. They were pretty grimy when I got them, but I worked to degrease them and get them clean. Toss them in the blast cabinet, clean them up really good, and uh, went to work to paint them. And they came out really great once they were all cleaned and painted. Here's a good before and after next to one another. So a visit to O'Reilly and got all the needed bearings and seals and dust caps for them and got them on the car. They actually bolted in pretty easily without any problems. The brake kit I used was from PowerStop. It came with the rotors, single piston calipers, and brake pads. This is a standard S10 kit. I suppose I could have gone with something you know a little fancier, dual pistons or some Willwood kit, but I'm not really building a race car. It's kind of going to be a cruiser at the end of the day. And it's really come a long way since when we tore this thing down. Next up was all the steering components. I was a dummy, tossed out the car's original power steering box, so I bought a rebuilt one off of Rock Auto. Finding the pitman arm was actually a real challenge, but a buddy up in Canada sent me one just for the cost of shipping. Thanks, Cam. It cleaned up great. Painted it and got it onto the steering box, which, by the way, is 184 foot-pounds. I got a new power steering center link off of eBay, and to clean that up, Painted that to keep it from rusting as well. And here's the steering box bolts. Yep, they missed the trip to the CAD plater, so washers made it though. Once I had all these parts cleaned and painted, I went ahead and installed them on the car.
I picked up some Moog tie rods and they got the same cleaning and painting process and they got installed. I tried to use Moog parts for everything that I could, springs, center link, tie rods, anything I could get. The final piece of the suspension puzzle was the rear end, but yeah, not, not like this though. That's better. It was professionally rebuilt by Jim at JD Race in Richfield, Ohio. And it got a new posi, uh, 342 gears, 28 spline S10 axles, new brakes. Everything was gone through and rebuilt. And it bolted into the car pretty easily. So here we are under the car with the axle installed. It's actually getting a little dusty under here. I gotta clean under here. Anyway, um, so yeah, I had my axle re rebuilt by uh, Jim over at JD Race. He's in Richfield, Ohio, and he's pretty well known for H-body rear ends. This is the original rear end out of the car, and it's been upgraded with uh, 342 Posi. And yeah, as a result, I'm gonna have to go with an overdrive transmission. But um, new springs, I forget what they are. They're, Mo they're Moog, M-O-O-G, Moog, but I forget the number. I'll put that down here in the picture somewhere. Um, uh, it's got a standard uh, sway bar on it. And I used the uh, KYB shocks. And I have UMI control arms and a UMI adjustable pan hard rod, pan hard bar, whatever you wanna call it, uh, underneath here. So. Yeah, this bolted in pretty easy. Uh, the sway bar is rubbing against the brackets right now because the pinion angle is pointing up because there's no torque arm on it yet, so. Yeah, finally off the accessory. Now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this damn thing. Do I sell it, do I keep it? Do I take it apart and stash it in the corner? I don't know. Yeah, the bumper brackets. I'll need to clean those up, prime and paint them. But first time it's been on its wheels in nearly four years. Big milestone. Now I just have to do everything else and start spending a lot of money, I guess. Don't tell the wife. Oh, there she is. So that was the suspension installation. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of work. This video is kind of short, but it was a lot of work and a lot of scary moments to get that suspension on the car, especially the front. The rear wasn't so bad. Um, everything up to this point has really been historical on this car. Um, there hasn't been anything, uh, this is what I'm doing today kind of videos yet. Um, I just wanted to get everybody caught up before I get to that point, I guess. So the next video I'm probably gonna do is gonna be on the tail panel right there right right there um which uh thank god a guy up in uh, michigan named doug basher makes those uh he does a phenomenal job of making them so thank god he makes those because otherwise i don't know what you do for the tail of these cars because they all rotted off every single tail panel rotted off but uh, i do actually have an original one which i think i've shown in videos before but it's it's in pretty rough shape and i used it really just as a a guidelines a template uh, to get the uh, the tail panel fitted to the car so that'll be the next video but pretty soon I'm gonna be out of material and I guess I'll have to actually start working on the car again so again thank you to buddy that actually watches these videos um, I'm, I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying doing these videos so hope you guys are the ones that are watching uh, and I appreciate it so thanks until next time